Fireman Terry Kelleher, seen here in the dark coat, says conditions were so cold the day the wahine went down that people in the water were too cold to even climb into the life rafts. Being the youngest and, and the silliest probably, I um, went over the side of the Zodiac and, and swam over to the life raft and assisted four or five people into the raft. He managed to pluck many people from the sea, but it's taken 50 years for Kelleher to tell his story. I've never really discussed it with my wife or children or grandchildren. It's just, um, I don't know, it, it's something that's um, quite haunting in a way. Haunting because of the bodies. The final death toll was 53. There were a number of people who had drowned who were floating in the harbour and it was fairly traumatic. Hundreds gathered at a dawn service in Eastbourne to commemorate the 50th anniversary. Perhaps fittingly, stormy weather drove proceedings inside. It's very special. Um, we're lucky to be here still. Rob Ewan's family of five survived. He dropped his mother into a lifeboat and helped others as he made it to land. Because the surf was awful. But at that same time, there's two kids popped up in the water beside me and another guy. We helped them ashore. Rob came to help me because I couldn't swim. One of those kids was Nasura Banya Piapod, who was six at the time. For the commemoration, Rob Ewan tracked her down in Thailand. I couldn't tell you how I felt that um, I get to meet someone who actually saved my life. A flotilla in Wellington Harbour later marked the anniversary. Among the vessels were boats that took part in the rescue. The Wahine disaster was ultimately blamed on the weather, but it gave rise to changes in Wellington's emergency responses with the creation of both the Life Flight Trust and the Volunteer Coast Guard. Emma Jolliffe, News Hub.